Thanks so much, Tanya. Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Ron Haid from Financial. <clears throat> it's very nice to be here with you guys. This is going to be interactive, so you're definitely uh, welcome to ask questions as we go throughout the presentation. If I do not answer your question, I promise I am not ignoring you, and I do promise at the very end I will absolutely take your question. I'm just going to try to keep an eye on things, see how they're going, and then just stay on track for what I would like to cover. Now, if you ever see me in a live presentation, the lawyers make me do this. I must say the disclaimer that nothing in this presentation shall constitute a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Trading stocks and, op trading stocks and options involves risk and specific financial issues should always be addressed with your financial advisor past performance no guarantee of future performance so what we're going to do today is what i said in the emails and that is show you the hottest trending stocks for the next whether that be six weeks eight weeks 12 weeks in time not that i'm going to say they have a good chance of moving higher or lower but the stock's own historical track record will be our secret weapon and that's pretty exciting. And I'll explain a little bit about that when we start looking at the data set. So if you do wanna take pictures of my screen as I'm presenting, please feel free. All right, you ready to rock and roll? All right, let's do this. All right, disclaimer is out of the way. So when we go to financial.com, we can type in any symbol to get inside the software. Now let's just say I wanna type in the cues. Boom, now I'm in. Now this is where the magic happens. The next place we're going to go is screen. Then we're going to click on seasonality. Now I have some of these settings already uh, preset for us, but I'll tell you what they are right now. It might help help you out a little bit. I'm asking the software to look for stocks that go up at least 5% over the next 12 weeks, which is pretty much, you know, three months with at least 70% accuracy. So 70% or better go up at least 5% over the next 12 weeks. Now, if I scoot down a little bit and I hit advanced filtering, I'll come back to stock rating in a minute. We're gonna look for stocks that are optionable. Now, this is a preference for me because I love trading options. You know, options can be as dangerous, I suppose, as maybe anything else in the market. We definitely can lose money when we trade them. But for me, if I were to buy 100 shares of a stock and that stock hypothetically goes to zero, I lose all that capital and it could be a lot of money. Whereas if I trade an option on that same stock, the options cost a fraction of what the stock may cost. Therefore, it's less risk per share. So that's why I prefer to trade options. Share price, this is a me thing. I'm just looking for stocks that are at least 10 bucks a share or higher. Nothing against the little guys. I just want stocks that are more, you know, higher price, they move better. Minimum number of years trading history. This is really important. I want stocks that are at least <clears throat> publicly traded 10 years. And this year I'm gonna move it to 11 years because what's really important is when we think back, when was the last market crash? You start saying 2008, 2009, right? I want to go back to at least that time frame. So in fact, I could even move that right now to 11 years if I wanted to. And then 30 day average volume. This is something our members wanted put in, um, meaning you want to look for stocks that are what we call liquid. So 500,000 shares or more per day. Okay. Once that's done, we come on down and this is where the magic happens. If you want to take a picture or write some of these stocks down, please feel free. These are the hottest stocks, the hottest bullish stocks for the next 12 weeks, period. So what does it even mean? It means they go up. Well, why do they go up? Because more buyers come in than sellers. It really is that simple. Seemingly, during the same times of each year, more buyers come in than sellers, and these stocks get pushed up by an average of this rate. So Crocs, 30% gain over the next 12 weeks. Are you kidding me? Nope. Baidu, 
almost 19%, Skechers, 18%, Amazon, 14%, Intuitive Surgical, Pioneer Drilling, 13, Dollar Tree, 13, McKesson, 11. Some of these are really well-known companies that you probably heard of before. And there's other companies maybe you've never traded, like maybe you never traded Nuva. I never have. So what I like to do when I start my research <clears throat> is write down some of these symbols that I know, like a Crocs, a Baidu, a Skechers, an Amazon, an Intuitive Surgical. And this is where I begin my research. This saves me an incredible amount of time knowing that these stocks have proven track records of moving higher. And let me just say again, the only way these stocks are listed here is if their history says this is what they do. Because how I usually start this presentation is by posing a question to you guys. What do you think the number one challenge is every single day before you place your trade? Having the confidence that the stock is actually gonna go up, right? Or down, depending how you're trading. Well, we can basically flush that down the toilet and say we don't need that anymore because we have the list. This is the stock's own track record. This isn't what I think. It's not what you think. Hey, we might meet for coffee, maybe have our favorite beverage at night and say, hey, what stocks do you think are going to be hot in the next month or two? That's all fine and dandy because we're friends. But I like money and I want to go with the stocks that have these track records. I can't tell you why the institutions, the deep pockets, push these stocks up on average by these percentages, at least 70% of the time, they just do. Hedge funds get way too much credit for quote, being so smart. I can tell you this, one of our team members has worked for a massive monster hedge fund. Saw so the inner workings, had to sign an NDA. We can't mention their name in a webinar to no one. They're aware of what this is called, the seasonality effect because the big money moves these prices. All of us here today, I know Tanya has a great group of folks that are here, all the presenters like me and Barry and others that invited folks in. All of us today, unless there's some really big fish out there, even if we all tried to buy Crocs or Baidu or Skechers, we may not even make one block trade on the CNBC or Bloomberg ticker. That's how much of a small fish that we are. So when the big players come in, they're gonna layer their positions over days, maybe even weeks to build it. And then when they try to get out, they're gonna exit days and weeks under normal circumstances. Now, one advantage that you and I have as a retail trader, we can be very, very surgical in our approach. We can wait instead of sticking our neck out first, we can wait for the big players to come in and see if they're going to start pushing this list of stocks up. And once we see the whites of their eyes, the elephant out in the pasture feeding, then we can come in later. And we also know when they start to leave because the seasonality, the track record is no longer hugely positive. And to me, this is a massive help to me as a trader. It alleviates a lot of guesswork and makes me feel tremendously more confident. Because I'm going to show you some examples here in a second. And I'm, I, bet, I bet this just happened to you. The market ran up really big into the end of the year. It also ran up really big to the start of the year. How many of you guys said, okay, the weekend's coming. I'm going to spend hours and hours away from my family. Try to find the best darn stocks to pay some bills. And then you manage to pick the one that didn't go up. And then we all raise our hands. My question to you is, did you perform the seasonality check? Did you perform the financial check? Did you have the wind at your back or the wind in your face? Knowing that all these stocks have traditional good track records right now, this is where I want to be. I don't know about you. I like Apple products but it doesn't mean that now is the best time to buy them. Does that make sense? So let's first check some of these stocks individually. Let's look at some historical track records. And I think what you're gonna see here is literally going to blow, it's just gonna blow your mind in some cases that really, is it that easy? 
you know? And the answer is, believe it or not, it's pretty gosh darn easy. And one other thing I want to point out why we're on this page, all this data you see, it's not proprietary to us. I am not showing you anything that is unique. All we've done is buy a crap load of data for a lot of money, give each week the same value, and we can spit it out that when you come to this screen and you go click, click, you can save these settings and give them a name. So every time you come to this page and you click that button, they're all listed there and you just pick which ones you want. You're talking that within, it's gonna take you longer to sign into your laptop than it will to come to this page and say, boom, there they are. So if you're a scientist, a person that's black and white about things, doesn't really care about opinion. If you're an engineer, you're probably loving this. So you ready? Now let's first start with, why don't we take the first one, Crocs. So let's come up here, go search, go seasonality, and we'll just type in K-R-O-X. Now we'll scoot down a little bit. And what I'm gonna do, I am at, I'm at 90% already, okay. I'm gonna take this out to 12 weeks. So I wanna keep this as big as I can on your screen. Maybe I can make it just a teeny bit bigger. Yeah, there we go. So this is at 12 weeks, which is where our search was. Now, if I scroll down a little bit, this solid line is what the stock has done. This dashed line is what the stock is projected to do. It is the probabilistic future price of where this stock might go if the stock lives up to its historical track record. Does that make sense? I cannot predict where a stock will go. That's a very dangerous word in the stock market. The regulators don't like it. But I can use the stock's own track record to give you an idea of where it may go. And then if you look over here, you can see the numbers. Or I can just take my little mouse and just go along this line and it pops up for you too. Now, if I scoot down a little bit, over the next 12 weeks, Crocs has on average historically risen by 30.7% based on 12 years of stock performance. And at the very bottom of your screen, Crocs has risen higher in nine out of 12 years, which is a 75% accuracy rate. So here's a question, a little rhetorical. When's the last time you spent an hour or two researching your stocks and decided to say, you know, I think I found a good one. I think this one can go up 75% of the time, specifically over the next 12 weeks, yeah, by about 30.7%. I think if you did that with your trading buddies, they might laugh you right out the door. But that's what the stock does. No opinion needed. It's just what it does historically. Now, some years it might go up 60%. Some years it might drop 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50%. You average them all together, three quarters of the time, this stock goes up by 30%. Now, that's a stock that I want to look at. So, if we go take a look at Crocs, now I'm going to bring up Thinkorswim. Okay, that's who I use. It doesn't matter who you use. You can use TradeStation, Schwab, whatever you want. I'm going to minimize this. I type in KROX. Well, if I zoom in now, just over the past couple months, Crocs has been bullish, showing up on these scams, March and April. If you just look back, even into here, before it even started with its bullish bias, and you just take something from 316, let me just show you what can happen here. If I go analyze, let me get rid of this. And we type in K-R-O-X. And I go back to 316 just to show you an example. That's 15. There's 16 you already see what the stock is doing. Let's say we look at an option right at the money. 
Now, I only have about 45 minutes today, so I'm going to have to go really, really fast. Normally, I can talk about this stuff for two hours, but I want to be respectful, make sure everybody stays on track today. Look at this. The stock was at 1487 even after that nice big up day. An at the money call cost a buck 40. A 15 at the money call cost a buck 40. If I go to today's prices, it's now worth 245. That's over a dollar a share that this stock is up on a little rinky dink option. So if you take a buck 40 and divide that by 245, it's already up. What is that? 57% if my math is right. By the time that gets to 280, if it does, it's going to be a double. And you can see there's a large bid ass spread here. This is this is just what happens. All we do is wait for the stock to start showing volume. Up it goes in its seasonal window. The volume tells you the big buyers are returning and off we go. That's how easy it is. So that's a really fast example, right? But let me let me just show you some others. So here's what I'm going to do. Bring back Thinkorswim. I love using this. I love using Disney, but I also love using Adobe. Okay. Now, the screen got really, really big. Here's what I want to show you. Right here, right where my mouse is. <clears throat> this was the election when the president, the new president was elected. Now this is not a political show, so let's leave all that to the side. This was the election. Adobe jumped up and then Adobe went down. Let's go look at the Dow, shall we? We'll use the ticker symbol DIA. What did the Dow do when the new president was elected? There's that one day move. And then it just went bonkers into the end of the year, right? So the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the Qs, the S&P 500, which I have a long-term bullish position in, they all went nuts, right? When the president was elected, zoom, markets are soaring, good times are here, blah, blah, blah. What did the stock that you do, you bought do? Your stock went up that one day, and then it went down, went sideways, then it went down again, then it tried to rally into December. Oh, earnings, and then it went down again. So let's get this straight. President's elected, the market thinks that's a good thing. Markets go crazy, crazy bullish. You pick a company that's been around forever, Adobe, makes a good product, and your stock went down. How many of us did that? We'd probably raise our hands and say, yeah, I, I've done that before. I managed to pick, you know, my bad luck. I picked out one stock that never went higher. We've all been there. We've all done it. But my question to you is, did you check the stock seasonality? Did you check when the big money comes into the stock? And if you did, you wouldn't have got caught in this trap. I can't tell you why, guys, they don't buy Adobe in the fall into the holiday season when the markets are soaring. They buy other stocks. Other tech stocks do well, just not Adobe. So here we go. You pop up, you come down, you come down again. Now you have this dollar sign, which means earnings. We've always been told, I think that's fair to say, that earnings reports are supposed to be the catalyst that sends stocks higher and lower, right? Well, earnings report, the stock gaps up and then closes lower and then drifts down a little bit in one of the most bullish times of the year. Are you kidding me? How's this possible, right? This is craziness. It wasn't its time. Our software, showed that Adobe becomes a rock star January 1st.
technically it's the second because the markets are closed on the first. January 2nd, this thing gets nuts. Not in November, not in December, January. So instead of us making a bad decision and taking a stock that actually went down, we could have been out there trying to find stocks that are going up. But it, this gets even more emotional than that. If you think back to when the president was elected and your stock went down initially, you're probably a little frustrated, but you're not throwing in the towel yet. But then it goes down further. Now you're just really getting ticked off. But then what do we all say in December? Bullish time of the year, yes. Earnings are coming. That's supposed to make stocks go higher, yes. And then it doesn't. At this point, you're probably going to do what? You're gonna sell that stock at the end of the year. You're gonna say, forget this. This was such a bad stock. I'm a terrible trader. I'm an idiot, I'm awful. We say bad things to ourselves, which isn't really fair. You know, we call it, you know, we're like, oh man, I'm the worst trader ever. And then you would have sold it and said, new year, fresh year, I'm gonna make better decisions. Really? Didn't I tell you that January becomes a rock star period for Adobe? Here's January of 2017, a year ago. Right when you would have said, enough's enough, I'm out of here. This is ridiculous. Up she goes, and up she goes, and up she goes, and up she goes. <laughs> it gets crazy. So what on earth happened here that didn't happen here? You didn't have big money behind you. How can I say that? Because the seasonality is the big money. We can't make stocks move like this. We don't have enough firepower, enough money to put in there. The big money came in, look at the volume spikes, look at the volume spikes, look at the volume spikes, earnings, volume spike. This returned 200 plus percent. I think it was up close to 290 or something on a long call at the money. 290 percent and all you did all you did was have to sit back and wait for the stock to close below the red line now the red line just if you're curious it's the 20-day exponential moving average the 20-day e m a it's a wonderful trend trading system it's free on every brokerage platform once the stock starts popping you just wait for it wait for it wait for it wait for it and then you're stopped out here ironically the stock went up another 10 bucks but you can't always catch the tops. So someone said to me, Ron, that's really cool and neat, but are you telling me that you had to stay in this position for four months, five months? I said, well, you don't have to do anything. I can't tell you what to do, but I don't know about you, but if I held a trade for four or five months that could produce, let's say 290 some percent return, I really just don't have a problem with that. And then he laughed and he said, but that's just a long time to tie up capital. My response was, well, how's your trading going? I mean, if you got something better going on, then go do it. I'm just showing you what we've put together and we're, it's not even proprietary. It's just the stock's own track record. So this is not rocket science by any stretch. And I said, but you know what? It's better than that because here's what I, here's what I like you guys to write down. If you can, it's hard for me to type here. So I'm going to say it out loud. Once a stock enters a seasonal window, I'm going to teach you this exit system. And I truly believe it's going to help you become more confident and less emotional trader. When I was taught how to buy in multiple lots, it really changed my trading career. Psychologically, I think everything for the better. So instead of considering buying one position, just one long call, we're gonna buy three. The first long call is gonna be sold when we can get a 20% profit. The second long call is gonna be sold when we can get maybe 100% profit. Now we've pulled two thirds of our trade off. And this part might blow your mind, but you're, all, you're gonna see this quite often at times happen within a month or two. So within a month or two, 
one third or two thirds of the trade is already closed. You only have that third piece, that single last long call open. And then you use the 20 day EMA as a trailing stop. When I got into the options market, into the stock market, I had no background. I worked in retail, never spent a day in college. I had no idea. I, you, know, you never taught finance in high school. I think they purposely don't teach us that. So, <laughs> you know, we, we end up just making bad choices and the banks make all their money or something. It is a bit bizarre how they don't teach us more about finance in school when it's you know one of the most important things to learn in our life. But here's my point. We as traders are greedy. And when you were told what a long call option was, you were told two things, risk reward. Risk is whatever you pay, you can lose. True. Reward was unlimited. It was infinity. All of a sudden, I like to say this, you saw leprechauns riding unicorns with buckets of gold. I wanna win infinity. I want to make a gazillion dollars, blah, 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 right? Well, that never happens. Infinity's infinity. So here's how we solve that problem. Because as traders, we've all gone through these emotions. You see a trade that you've placed, make some money. You want to quickly sell it. And then as soon as you sell it, the stock keeps going higher and higher, right? This is how we can control that. If we buy here, first one's off at 20%. Second one's off at 100%. Third one, now we can oink like the little piggy we want to be. Now we can squeal in the mirror when nobody's around and just follow that red line. And when it gets below it, at the end of the day, we close the trade. The next day, if we want to. That's it. If you practice this trading system in a paper trading account, I think you're absolutely going to love it if you're not aware of it already. So yeah, this could be a five-month trade but two thirds of it was gone over here. And here's the other beautiful part about this. It's hard to make money in the options market. It's not easy. When you can make 20%, that's a good time to take something off. When you can double your money, that doesn't happen very often. Take another one off. That third long call is now technically risk-free because you've made enough money on the others to pay for that one if the trade works out. And if the stock starts going up and it doesn't work out and it rolls over, Whenever it closes below the red line, the whole trade is closed, whether that be for a loss, partial loss, whatever it is. And as long as we don't risk more than we can afford to lose, we should be able to trade very, very confidently and unemotionally. So this is Adobe two years ago. Well, what did Adobe do this year? Well, funny you ask. On the right of your screen right now, here's Adobe. The stock had some good news in October, um, but I had told you before that November and December is just typically dead weight for Adobe. It actually doesn't do that well, yet the whole stock market once again this year was doing very well. But you knew that. You had access to financial. You knew that Adobe's going nowhere fast right now. So you wanna go trade other stocks that are gonna do way better. So we're gonna keep moving our money into the hot stocks so we're not caught with stocks at the wrong time of the year. Here's November, Thanksgiving, down goes Adobe. Here's earnings again, down goes Adobe. Two years in a row in a massive bull market. But you know something most traders don't. You knew not to touch this with a 10 foot pole right now but you knew come January 1st, it's game on. Guess what happened? Oh, really? Look at that. If I zoom in closer, left side of your screen, there comes the black bars. By the way, black is an up day, red is a down day. There she goes, there she goes. Black bars beating red bars. It's not the quantity of red, it's the height. As long as we see big volume, we know they're coming in. So from here to here was a 20 point gain. Then it gets stopped out and then it goes right back up. And then it's another almost, actually it was at one point, 30 point gain. This time it didn't go straight up. There were two windows. 
You know what the S&P and the Dow has been doing recently, right? They've been coming down. But you know that Adobe is a rock star. How's Adobe doing? Yeah, Adobe is actually going up. In fact, it's getting close to new all-time highs. Why the S&P and Dow are still in their trading ranges, bouncing around like a, you know, a kid with ants in their pants. So this is outperformance. You saw it in Crocs. Now you're seeing it with Adobe. Amazing, isn't it? How about Disney? I would like to ask you guys a question and I would love your participation. Does anybody know when the best time to trade Disney bullish is? Do you think it's in the summer when all the kids are out of school, driving their parents more crazy than they already are <laughs> at the theme parks? Maybe you think it's um, the winter, you know, between Hanukkah and Christmas and New Year's, something like that. Maybe you don't know. Does anyone have a guess? Well, I'm going to show you. This is a two-year chart of Disney. This is May of 2016, nearly two years ago. The summer Disney goes down. The fall it bottoms. Then it goes up. Once again in May, it goes down into the fall. October, November, it goes up. Now this year, look what's happening. It's also coming down. So what does that mean? I'll show you. We took the company financial public, basically in October. And I didn't want my name associated because some of you guys might know my name from Market Tamer, which I'm a part owner in, and I'm also a part owner in financial. So I own two companies but I didn't want my name associated with it. So we actually went to um, a colleague and a friend of mine, Steve Bigelow, and I took it to his people. I love Steve. I think he's great. He has great education. And I said, Steve, would you mind letting me demo this to your people? But you do it. I don't want to be there necessarily. He's like, sure. And then he said, you know, Ron, you just know your software. Why don't you do it? So it was basically a closed imitation thing. So in October of 2016, I said, all right, gang, let, let's do this together. While Disney's in a downtrend, they're touting the fact that ESPN is just being terrible for ABC and Disney. It's ruining the brand, blah, blah, blah. I said, that might be fine. But did you know that Adobe, or excuse me, Disney has an 80 plus percent track record at times? And this company has been publicly traded over four decades. So that brings up the question, you know, whatever happened four decades, three decades, two decades ago, how can that be relevant in today's market? My answer is, guys, the data is the data. Stop trying to overthink this. The money just comes in. It's what they do. It's the only way this works. I am not saying this works. The data says it works. Disney becomes a rock star in November, October, November. All you're waiting for is the volume to come in, the volume to come in. These turkeys were buying it ahead of the earnings report. They bought it after the earnings report. And what happened to Disney? It gets shot out of a cannon. Finally, it closes below the red line and we're out. Another five month trade. This was a 200 plus percent gain again. Then this summer, right here. Well, first of all, let me back up. Now that you know, the fall and winter is a great time to potentially be bullish on Disney. The wrong time, April and May. Be very, very, very careful. That's when the stock puts a high in. Earnings comes. But wait, the stock just had a good run. Yep. Now they sell it. Now the big money is sector rotating. They're going from here and they're going to go over there. They're moving their money. So they can maximize their returns. Down she goes. But then I'll never forget this because it was a it was a, a, a moment for my wife and I as well. But this was coming down and I was heading away on vacation. In August, I was heading to uh, my wife and I were going to Australia for two weeks. So I was going to be basically just off the grid for two weeks, just having just taking a chill. 
And I did a webinar for all the members at Financial. And they said, Ron, this was the end of July and the stock started jumping up on the 27th. And they said to me, Ron, this stock is starting to rip higher. I thought you said Disney always goes down in the summer. And like, that's not exactly what I said. The data says the summer is the worst time for Disney. And the best time is fall and winter and early spring. And I said, watch what's going to happen here. Now, I apologize. This might sound really a little aggressive. I, there's better words to use. But because it's our money and I want to drive home a point, I'm going to say this. They call this like a fake out. I call it leading the sheep to the slaughter. I don't know why this stock started moving up, but if you had access to financial, you knew not to trust that move with a 10 foot pole, even if there was a big bucket of ice cream on the other end of it. You were way more informed than that. You knew that these little buggers might be trying to drive this stock up, but you know darn well, you better walk away from this and not touch it because this thing is probably gonna go down. This is not when Disney is good. Look what happened. They lured all those sheep in and just stole their money and down it goes. You were never part of that because you had access to the data. Instead, you're either maybe you're on vacation too, or you're going to trade other stocks that are bullish in the summer. You're just not trading Disney. When do you trade Disney? End of October, beginning of November. Look at the volume again. Two years in a row, just the two years I'm showing you. Pop goes the weasel. Volume spikes in front of earnings as if they knew what was going to happen. Pulls back, goes up, pulls back, goes up. This was another triple digit gain. Where were you stopped out? January 30th. Now, I use this, use this example on purpose. Usually, October, November to April is fantastic. But then you might say, Ron, what if this is the one year? Maybe it doesn't quite work out like the averages suggest. My answer to you is, that's the beauty of the red line. When you get below it, you're done. And then you miss all this nonsense. So did Disney work two out of two years? Yep. Did it work exactly the same? Nope. Were there, double digit, were there triple digit return potentials? Yep. This one just ended early. And now we just walk away and go find something else. I want to show you something. One last example, because um, Tanya is going to drop a link for you guys for an absolutely free trial here in about one more minute. This was this past October, November, and December. Netflix went nowhere for three months. What did the stock market do? Yeah, it went higher again. So could you imagine if you happened to be the unlucky person to pick Netflix and Adobe for the last quarter of the year? And you didn't make any money. You might have lost money. And then you sell them only to find out you just bought them at the wrong time. Netflix goes bonkers, crazy bullish in January. And look what it did. It literally waited until the new year began. It jumps, it jumps, red line and jumps. At one point from here, to here, an at the money long call was over a 600, 600% return. It was over $10,000 of potential profit using an at the money option. I kid you not. The members were writing in saying, OMG. They could not believe how the data can play out. And if you came in late, it's not proprietary, gang. You guys can do this homework in a weekend. But how many stocks are you going to get through? One, two, are you going to be worried you did the math right? I don't know. Or you could just come to financial one more time. Screen, seasonality. I'll sort it by that column. Scroll down and I would say, hey, everybody, why don't you just start here? It's going to save you a heck amount of time. And all you're doing is using raw data to your advantage. So here's what I want to do. Um, Tanya was awesome enough to invite me in, which I love, for 45 minutes today. I'm going to do a webinar um, next week. And everybody who takes the trial 
will be invited. I'm going to give you a demo of the whole site. I'll actually walk through with you and give you real trading ideas. I'll give you examples of strike prices, how we can do it, how we can follow along in paper. So Tanya, would you be so kind to drop that link in? And she has. So gang, that's a really funny looking long link, but it tells me that you came from Tanya and the team at Traders Talk Live. Everybody who signs up for the trial gets the invitation next week. So it's gonna give you the weekend to play around with it. I'm gonna send you a couple emails that are gonna have um, helping hand videos as well. There is no credit card required, none. So even if you don't do anything after 14 days, it's sort of like that Mission Impossible, you know, um, movie where it just disintegrates in front of your eyes. There's nothing to cancel. There's nothing to buy in this trial. I want this to be no friction. Come in, take the trial, play around with the software. I'm going to do a webinar with you guys next week. We'll probably spend an hour, maybe even more. I can take your questions there and I'll show you more examples that worked. I'll show you the exits. I'll show you that it's a little dirty secret out there that hedge funds get all this credit, but they're the ones that create the seasonality effect up and down. I can show you some of the worst stocks for the summer in next week's webinar together. You're going to be blown away that you better be very careful of AMD, of Akamai in the summer. How the airlines soar in November, pardon the pun, but they crash in January like clockwork. Why Domino's Pizza is better than Papa John's. Do you ever find yourself in a situation where, man, I don't know which stock to pick. They both in the same industry. But did you know that around the Super Bowl time, Domino's blows the doors off Papa John's? It's amazing how much of a better track record Domino's has versus Papa John's. I like pizza. I like money more, though. Then I can go buy whatever pizza I want. <laughs> All right. So it's coming up to the top of the hour. I just want to say thanks to everybody for being here. I hope I put a nice, concise presentation together to show you that there is a dirty little secret in the stock market. It is called seasonality. And we can serve these wonderful trade ideas up to you on a silver platter every single day. So you're not wondering what is or isn't maybe going to occur. I can actually show you incredibly high probability trade ideas. If you have any questions, um, you can email Tanya. She'll send them to me. My email address is care, C-A-R-E, at financial.com. So you can just go, that's our name up there, and it's just the word care. But Tanya can also forward them on to me, take the free trial, and I look forward to seeing you next week. So Tanya, I want to keep everybody on schedule. So thank you um, to you and your team for inviting me in. Thanks, everybody, for coming. And uh, have a wonderful day. Thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye.